Good morning. It's good to see you all here this morning, even though it's raining outside. It's nice and warm in here, and we're happy to see you all here. And a warm welcome to all of you that are worshiping with us from home. Y'all made the smart decision to stay at home and not get wet, but we're glad that you have found us and you are with us today. Those of you that are here, if you'll look in the back of your bulletins, there are some announcements I want to bring to your attention. The first of which is today is the last day that Welka is collecting a special offering. We uh, started collecting it last week, <clears throat> and today is the last day. This is for a CCM housing project this month. Um, so we are trying to help them with what they're trying to work through over there. So if you would like to donate for this CCM housing project, please make your checks payable to Welka. Put it in the memo line that it's for the CCM housing project. But if you have cash and you're putting it in, a, in an envelope, please mark um, that it's for the Welka event. Also, we have resumed our Bible study, and we have options for Zoom at both 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., and we are looking at the letters of Paul, so we would love for you to join us. Um, we are going to be looking at 1 Thessalonians tomorrow for those of you that will be joining us, so it'll be a, a good time. We hope you'll, you'll be with us. Um, we are going to be accepting new members in a couple weeks. So if you or someone you know would like to become a part of us here at Mount Hermon, please let me know. Um, and also this coming Saturday, we are having our family game night. This is something that I don't think we've done since October. We kind of held off during the cold winter months, but we're bringing it back. And we're going to be in the fellowship hall this time. So if you've got a game, a card game that you like to play, a board game, please bring it. Um, if not, we've got plenty of games here. And this is not just for kids. Uh, a lot of the adults have a lot of fun at this event as well. And many of you are very competitive, I've noticed. So uh, bring that competitive spirit and come and join us. We should have a good time. If you'll notice on the calendar at the very bottom of your bulletin, that was inadvertently left off. So if you want to write in that Saturday is game night, um, and that's at 5 p.m. And also, one week from today, we will be having our 143rd anniversary celebration. The old building will be open. Our history room will be open. Uh, many of you maybe haven't had a chance to go back there in many years or even over there at all. So we would love for you to come and be able to explore that space that's so uh, so much a part of our history. And then also go to the coffee house for cake and other goodies that we will have that day. So we hope it's just a very good celebratory feel. Um, and two weeks from yesterday, we are having our congregational dinner. So we hope everybody has that on their calendar. Mike will be cooking up some chickens and some potatoes and salad. And y'all are providing the dessert. So I'm going to be uh, looking for some good desserts. I might just eat a whole plate of them. Um, and then the following Sunday will be Youth Sunday. So two Sundays from today, our youth will be leading everything for us. And I promise you, you do not want to miss it is going to be so much fun, and they're very excited about putting it together. They've been rehearsing for two weeks already, so they're very excited to be able to lead worship. And then finally, put VBS on your calendar. It will be the first week in June. It is Sunday, June 2nd through Wednesday, June the 5th. It's from 5.30 to 8. There'll be a meal at 5.30, and then we'll break up into groups and then come back together and be done at 8 o'clock. So we hope that you can all join us for that. And with that being all my announcements, I go back to the front of the bulletin. I ask y'all to stand with me. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I always do this, don't I? <laughs> we had our council meeting this past Thursday, and Chris has our council report. <laughs> All right, church council met this past Thursday night. Uh, the pastor started off with her invocation, uh, gave a reflection from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. She spoke about that Christ is alive, and not only is he alive, but he also appeared to us. This is a life-giving story of Easter that Christ died and was buried, and he raised on the third day. She shared a story that one time another pastor shared communion with a blind woman, and the woman told the pastor that Jesus appeared to her uh, in, in the bread. 
And the council members reflected on specific celebrations of the Lord's Supper that they remembered and where Jesus appears in our congregation. And then the council also shared the Lord's Supper with each other. Uh, the, the pastor just stated uh, that uh, Vacation Bible School will be held uh, June the 2nd through the 5th, and the church council will provide a meal on one of those nights. Uh, the church services during Holy Week and Easter were well attended. Overall, attendance has increased at both of our services, the 9 o'clock and 1055 services. Um, there will be a youth mission trip in Charleston, South Carolina on July 7th through the 12th. We have five youth members that will be attending the trip. Um, the church is also looking to host a float at the Harrisburg uh, Parade on July the 4th. More details will be coming um, on the parade. Uh, from the treasurer's uh, report, uh, with three months of the year gone, we are exceeding our revenue projections and are below our expenses for the year. Uh, we currently have one AA group from the community that is currently using our church space to meet during the week, but another group has reached out uh, to us about using our campus as well. The council discussed developing a letter of intent to list terms and conditions to further discussions with the new group. Um, the council will also uh, like to create a safety team. Uh, there will be a sign-up sheet uh, next Sunday, April 28th in the Northex, I believe. Uh, please see Mike Faggart if you're interested or have questions. Uh, men and women are invited to be to join the team. So see Mike uh, if you're interested. And last, uh, we have uh, three council members uh, recently visited Christ Lutheran Church in Charlotte and spoke with a member regarding their church, church growth. Uh, they plan to visit other churches in our area. Um, it, from our church uh, council surveys, it was stated there were a lot of positive comments that came in from those surveys that were recently submitted. And the church council will be discussing the surveys at an upcoming meeting. So, Thank you very much, Chris. And I did remember one other announcement. Uh, Social Ministry is planning to provide a meal for the A.T. Allen Volunteer Fire Department uh, the first week of May, I do believe. And we have a sign-up sheet in the back if there are those of you that would like to help participate in feeding them. We have a list of items that are on a clipboard back there. And if somebody wants to grab it and pass it through worship, I'm fine with that. Um, it's back on the table in the narthex. Otherwise, we'll take it over to Sunday school and hopefully we'll get all our slots filled. Now I'm going to ask you to go back to the front of your bulletin and to stand with me for our Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. And in the desert pool, the Ethiopian entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here, here is, is our water Lord, of life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment to share this peace with those worshiping around us. Thank you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. pray, and I promise to let y'all pray with me. O oh Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and any kids that are here can come on up. I've got some pictures today. Y'all got to help me out with... It's picture time. You just never know what you're going to get. Remy is a box of chocolates, y'all. Y'all going to both dig a sit on the opposite sides of each other? It might be a little easier if you come over here. Can you come over here? So I, can... I think it's the same kind of cushion. That one's way comfier, by the way. How about next week we sit over there? Does that sound good? Okay, so I have a question for you. Do you know what this is? Sheep. Do you know how many sheep there are in those fields? Probably 200. Like yeah, I think that's like 100, and 100 and something. That's a lot of sheep. Do you see that there's, you maybe can't see because they're kind of small in this picture, but there's moms. There's moms and there's babies in that, right? And let's say, there's, there's a little tiny one right there. So let's just say, let's just say, Remy, that there's 200 sheep here, right? And let's just say 50 are babies and 150 are the mom or some or 50 mommies, of course, and then 100 others, right? How are the babies ever supposed to find their mommies in all of those sheep? Uh, when there is no sheep? 
No, there's, a, there's 200 sheep. How do those 50 babies find those 50 mommies? So they can get like this. How do they recognize them? Uh, Think about it. Not all sheep have the same color eyes. Not all sheep have the same color eyes, maybe. Their, How else do they recognize? By their walk? Uh, color? Like, by their color? Like some are like black. Yeah. Some are, white. some are black and some are white, right? What are uh, some other ways that you can recognize or the sheep can recognize their mommy? Or maybe not recognize, but find their mommy. How can they find their mommy? Smell them, smell them out. Yes. I bet their mommies have particular smells, and they recognize it, don't you think? Are you ready for that? He's going to smell you out. <laughs> 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 so I have a question for you. If there was a hundred mommies lined up, how would you know yours? Uh, I wouldn't know your mom. You would just recognize your mom, right? Because you've spent a lot of time with her, right? Yep. yep. You would recognize her hair and how tall she is and maybe her eye color, right? Yeah. And maybe her smell. Would you recognize her voice? Yes. Yes, you definitely would. And you would recognize her nose. You'd recognize her nose. <laughs> he would recognize your nose. That's good. So there's lots of ways that sheep can recognize their mommies, right? And a lot of ways that we can recognize our mommies. You know, I know my mama by her cough. And if I'm in a room of 200 people and my mama coughs, I know it's her. You know, our mommies have distinctive sounds, right? Distinctive voices. Um, so I want you to listen in the story. When I stand up here and I talk, Jesus is talking about being a shepherd and that he has a bunch of sheep and the sheep know him, right? How do you think Jesus' sheep know him? And by the way, we're the sheep. How do we know Jesus? Because he literally created us. Yeah, exactly. You're so good, right? Because God and Jesus, right, are one, and that's where we come from, right? So, of course, we're going to recognize who created us, just like we recognize our mommies and daddies, right? So I want you to think about that. Jesus has a bunch of sheep, us, and we recognize him because he created us, right? Because he calls to us, because we follow him, because we come to church and we learn all these stories about Jesus, you're, yeah. you're a real sheep. <laughs> Created a monster. No, it's okay. I love it. I love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. So remember that, right? We are Jesus' sheep, and we know Jesus because we come to church and we hear stories about Jesus, right? And we follow his voice, and we follow what he tells us to do and love other people and care for other people, right? Sounds good? All right. So let's pray because you're going to go back to your seat in a second. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you are our good shepherd and we know your voice and we follow you and you teach us all the right things to do. Help us when we slip up and don't do the good things and continue to love us as much as you do. And we pray in your name. Amen. Right over here, you can grab a bag. Candy bags. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 4. The next day the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Ananias, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health, 
by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Psalm today is Psalm 23. Please read responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The second reading comes from 1 John, 3rd chapter. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid, laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And if we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Back many, many years ago, when I was pregnant with my son, I read every book about being pregnant and becoming a mother for the first time. I learned about how the baby develops month by month. I learned about what to expect during delivery. And I learned of other fun facts about the development of the babies in the womb, especially of their hearing. Did you know that babies begin to hear at 18 weeks of gestation? And then by 24 weeks, the baby becomes more sensitive to sound. And within two more weeks, babies can recognize sounds from outside the womb. 
I also discovered that following delivery, a baby can react to loud noises while feeding. Yeah, that was fun. A baby can calm down or smile when a parent speaks to them and they recognize their parent's voice. I thought this was absolutely fascinating that a baby can recognize the sound of their parents' voices when they are born. They've been listening to them from inside the womb for months so they can already recognize that voice. Now, other than our parents, there's another voice we can recognize. It's the voice of our good shepherd from our text today. Now, I think that it's fair to say that most of us do not have much experience with shepherds or with sheep. Am I right? So it's important to remember who the shepherd is and who the sheep are. And unfortunately, we will always be the sheep in this metaphor. Smelly, thinky, dumb sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. So if Jesus is the good shepherd, our first response seems to be, of course, in opposition to bad shepherds, right? And then we immediately try to determine the identity of these bad shepherds as so to avoid them, pit Jesus against them, or make sure we aren't one of them. And lest we forget the audience of Jesus' discourse in response to this, his healing of the blind, excuse me, the man born blind included the Pharisees, but it also included the disciples. Not to mention the original audience and those of us who authorize John's gospel as scripture. So before we quickly assert simplistic de designations that determine the bad shepherds as the Pharisees, we would do well to remember that listening to Jesus is Judas as well. And as a result, we spend a good deal of energy sifting out those that appear to oppose Jesus, those that seem counter to Jesus, those who are not Jesus. And it's in that space that we get into trouble, that Jesus is the only way, that without Jesus, hell is the future, that Christianity is good and every other expression of faith is bad. And as a result, little imagination is located in just what makes Jesus a good shepherd. We need to think more about what makes Jesus the good shepherd before our answer is, he's good because he's not bad. But here are a few of the ways Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd because he is the source of abundant life. Jesus is the good shepherd because he knows his sheep and he calls them by name. Jesus is the good shepherd because before he goes to the cross, he lays down his life by coming out of the garden, the fold, leaving his sheep protected and safe in the garden, giving himself up for the sake of his disciples, his sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd because he will take up his life again in the resurrection and in the ascension. The resurrection being our promise of life here and now and the promise of life in the future. The ascension being the abiding place that Jesus prepares for the ones he loves. But once again, that takes me back to the question about what does good mean because good has several different meanings when we think about it. When I was reading through several commentaries this week, I found one that explained this phrase by translating the word good instead to noble in verse 11. So Jesus calls himself the noble shepherd. Well, this made me think of medieval times and knights and chivalry. Someone who is noble has or shows fine personal qualities or high moral principles. They are righteous. They are virtuous. They are honorable. They are upright. They are decent. They are worthy. They are good, as in our good shepherd here. 
And in his discourse, Jesus contrasts this good shepherd with the hired hand. The hired hand did not have a vested interest in the lives of the sheep and would run off at the first sign of danger, leaving the sheep vulnerable to attack. So Jesus says he is the noble shepherd that will lay his life down for the sheep. But what stood out to me the most in this discourse from Jesus is when he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Had you ever noticed that phrasing before? Or more than noticed it, have you ever given much thought of these verses' implications? What strikes me is that quite simply, Jesus isn't done yet. Despite his healings, despite his preaching, despite all that he has done and planned to do, Jesus wasn't done and isn't done yet. He still has more sheep to reach. Sheep that are not in this particular fold. And by extension, I'd suggest that God isn't done yet either. And this matters for at least three reasons. First, God continues to call people from all walks of life, from every nation on the face of the earth, and from each and every generation. Across the nearly 2,000 years since Jesus first uttered those words until today. If that were not true, you and I would not have come to faith, and we certainly would not be living our lives proclaiming the gospel to those we meet. Second, God is at work in our midst and at work through us to extend the invitation of abundant life offered by our good and noble shepherd. Have you ever imagined that God is using your life and words to invite others to faith? Can you imagine that simply by praying for someone or inviting someone to church, you might be the way by which God continues to reach out and embrace these beloved sheep who are beyond the fold. And third, the members who will one day constitute Jesus' flock are beyond our imagining. There is a tremendous expansiveness in Jesus' statement here, and we do not know, for neither Jesus nor John tells us, just what are the limits of the fold Jesus describes. All we know is that Jesus, and therefore God, isn't done yet. Jesus is still calling. God is still searching. And in time, we will all be, as Jesus said, one flock under one shepherd. And I think this third point is the one that most ignites my imagination because I know more and more people who are worried about friends and family members who no longer go to church, who don't necessarily identify as Christian anymore, or who have married people of other faiths. I feel I can say with confidence that God is not done yet. And that God works in ways beyond our imagining to bring together one flock. What makes me so bold to proclaim these promises even though I don't know for sure the fate of the various people you and I are concerned about? Because of exactly what Jesus just proclaimed. Jesus is the good shepherd. The one who laid down his life for the sheep. For all the sheep. Which means, I think, that many, while we may not know all that God has in mind for those who have followed different paths, I nevertheless trust them all to the mercy and grace of the good and noble shepherd. So be on the lookout for more sheep, because Jesus is. Amen.
let us now join our voices together as we profess our faith in a triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. You may remain standing, sit, or kneel as you are comfortable for prayers. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church and ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God, at this point, we lift up to you names of those connected within our community of faith that are in need of prayers. Today, we pray for Rod and Betty and Kelly and Christy, Julia, Annie, Cash and Nancy, Tony, Roxanne, Janine, JJ and Lisa. And our prayers continue for Helen and Wendy, Rick, Carson, Shelley, Kathy, and Irene. But God, there are many more that are not listed here. People we love dearly in need of prayer. And we lift to you now those names, either silently or out loud. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen to your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we now receive our food offerings for CCM and our donations for this church and its ministries. We also ask that you take a moment to find the black book on your row somewhere, marking your presence with us and passing it down, allowing those around you to sign as well. And those of you worshiping at home, please send Christy a message and let her know you are with us today.
Let us stand together and pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. You may be seated until it's your time to come forward.
may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherd and God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Receive this blessing. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.